Hi, my name is Charlotte Beasley, and I'm the HR and payroll expert at FitSmallBusiness.com. Today, we're going to cover how to do payroll for your small business. But before we do, I want to encourage you to pause this video and go find a pen, pen and paper that you can use to take jot down some key concepts and terms that we discussed throughout this video. Things that you want to dive a little bit more in depth on at the end. I also want to let you know that we have a ton of resources and articles at the bottom of this video that will give you more information on each step that we cover. In addition to that, you'll have access to different templates and tools that you can start using in your business today that will help automate calculations and other processes. So let's get started. How to do payroll for small businesses. We're first gonna cover a brief overview of the steps that you'll need to follow. The first thing you'll need to do is to set your business up as an employer. And then you'll establish your payroll process. This will get you thinking about what you need to have ready for your process, the types of employees you're gonna be hiring, for instance, how often you're gonna pay them, all the decisions you need to make before you start running payroll on a regular basis so that you can set up um, a foolproof system. The next step will be to collect your employees' new hire forms. So you'll actually have to hire some workers. And once you do, there are different forms you'll need to collect to maintain compliance. And one of those is specific to payroll and uh, will be very, very helpful when you actually pay your employees. The next step will be to decide whether or not you need to track employees' time. Not everyone will. If you have a mix of hourly and salaried employees, then yes, you will, because hourly employees are paid by the hour. You need to know how many hours they've worked. Payroll calculations. This is something that a lot of business owners think about when they hear the word payroll. And we tend to think of it as a lot of complex math. If you're not a math person, you don't think you can do payroll. Well, um, you can do it and you can understand it. Now, payroll calculations, for the most part, are basic math. Um, a lot of the work is figuring out which tax rates apply to you, which tax rates apply to your employees, what needs to be deducted and when, and so forth. The next step will be to actually start paying money out. Which employees need to be paid? Which tax agencies do you need to pay? Federal, state, local? and benefits providers. Are you offering those benefits and, and who do you need to remit those funds to if so? And then payroll tax forms. Now here I have year end tax forms, but some employers are responsible for quarterly, uh, filing quarterly taxes. And so we'll cover that also. And last but not least, we'll go over payroll records briefly and how to store those. I'll give you some recommendations on how long to store them as well, uh, based on the law so that you stay in compliance. Set up your business as an employer. The first thing you'll need to do is apply for an EIN, which is an employer identification number. Very, very helpful um, because the IRS uses that to identify your company when you're actually remitting federal tax payments for your, for your business and from your employees. You want to make sure that it's easily tracked and it can be traced back to you. You want to get credit for that, for the funds that you actually do pay. You'll also need to open tax accounts. So if you have, uh, you'll need a bank account for uh, payroll specifically, um, not just your business. It's very easy to confuse your payroll, your payroll payments when you're, you in, mix them with your regular business accounts. So opening up a specific bank accounts for that is very helpful. You'll also need to sign up for EFTPS, which is the Electronic Funds Transfer Payment System. And it is required for you to be able to remit your federal tax payments. You can do that over the phone, and a lot of people do it over the phone, or even online. And then when it comes to workers' comp insurance, you may need to purchase that. In fact, most likely you will, because it's required in all states except Texas. And workers' comp insurance basically just prevents you from being liable in the event that one of your employees gets hurt on the job or suffers later as a result of work they did for your company. When it's time for them to be compensated, you don't want that coming out of your bank account. So very, very important. The next step would be to establish your payroll process. And then this step, I recommend starting to think about a lot of um, steps and stages that you're going to need to be setting up, 
like what you're going to need to do when it comes to running payroll on a regular basis. And there will have to be some decisions that need to be made. For instance, your pay schedule. How often are you gonna pay your employees? Weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, or even monthly? Now, you wanna know that the most common ones are weekly, bi-weekly, and semi-monthly, but you also need to consider the industry that your business is in. If you're in the restaurant industry and you have tons of waitresses and cashiers, how often do they typically, are they typically paid? Are they typically paid on a weekly basis for most of your competitors? If so, to remain competitive, you may also need to pay on a weekly basis. That means more processing for you. And with some providers, that means more of an expense, but it's something you need to consider. Others would be deciding between whether or not you're gonna do bi-monthly or bi-weekly or semi-monthly. Bi-weekly would be once every two weeks, Semi-monthly would be twice a month. That's typically on the same day, same dates. And a lot of companies will pay on the 15th and the 31st of the month. What's the difference between that? Why does it even matter? Well, if you're paying bi-weekly, then your employees are going to be paid at least three times during the month for, for a few months in the year. Most of the months they'll be paid twice, but there will be a few where they're paid three times. And during those months, you may not need to withhold um, as much money for certain deductions like benefits and, and whatnot. So it's very important to consider that. You'll need to put some steps in place to make sure that you don't forget and that um, you know exactly what you're responsible for each month. You'll need to consider the types of employees you're going to be hiring. Will you have hourly and salaried employees or will you just have commission-based employees? Tracking work time. Do you even need to track work time? That really depends a lot on the type of employees you have and, and how they will be working. Benefits. Are you going to offer benefits? If so, are you going to do it directly through a benefits provider? Do you have a payroll or HR provider who offers benefits directly and that will administer those benefits for you and withhold the premium amounts from the, the employee paycheck so you don't have to? Or will you just be crediting your employees' paychecks with a certain amount so they can go find their own insurance. That's very important to consider because you'll need to put a process in place for that. And then taxes. You'll need to consider what taxes you're responsible for. Federal, state, local. Depending on where your employees live, you may be responsible for all three, for yourself and for them. And so you'll need to get a wrap around that, figuring out where those taxes need to be paid and um, exactly how often and, and, and when you need to file them. So Getting that really will help you create a timeline for your business um, and so that you don't miss any key deadlines and get penalized for it. Now, when you get ready to hire new employees, it's important that you collect new hire reports. Form I-9, for example, really is just used to verify their eligibility to work in the United States. It needs to be complete, completed within the first three days of their employment. Um, it's very important. They'll need to provide at least two forms of ID, could be a passport, and to help speed that process up, you should have the form ready for the employee um, as soon as you hire them. Form W-4 is also important. It collects uh, a bit of information that you'll need, especially when you're, you're completing the year-end tax forms. So you'll get their name and their social security number and even their address, which comes in handy when you're reporting it to the IRS. You can identify them. But most importantly, they'll input their marital status and the allowances that they plan to claim on their taxes next year, which will help you figure out how much in taxes you need to withhold from each paycheck. And that's very, very important. And you should gather that and have them, have them complete that before you, well before you run the first payroll. You should always have your employees complete a direct deposit form. It's basically just giving you authorization to actually deposit money into their account. You may be thinking, who doesn't want money put into their account? But the law does require that you get approval. And so actually having them complete and sign and date a form saying that they do authorize you to put money into their account uh, will protect you in the future. There's also such a thing as a new hire reporting system for each state. Whenever you hire a new employee, you have about 20 days to get to report them to that state. And this even goes for rehires. So if you've laid somebody off a few months ago and now you're bringing them back on board, you'll still need to report them as a new hire. Should you track employees' time work? How will you track employees' time work? Well, 
If you have hourly employees, they are paid by the hour. So you need to know how many hours they work. You will definitely need to track their time worked. Salary employees are not always, um, it's not always the case. Salary employees um, typically receive the same pay each period, but there's one caveat to that. And it's depending on whether they are exempt or non-exempt employees. Now, most salaried employees are exempt employees, meaning they are exempt from overtime pay. Hourly employees are non-exempt employees. There are also sometimes, not very often, non-exempt salaried, salaried employees. So in the event that you do specify one of your salaried employees is non-exempt, you'll need to track work hours for them because they will need to be paid overtime if they ever work over 40 in a work week. And you have some options in terms of how you can track that time. Now, the old faithful method would be the timesheets, as you see there, where they document how many hours they worked on which days, and you'll need to, they'll need to turn it into their managers to get that approval and, and to kind of help get you a process in place so they're not trying to steal time and you can have a little bit of reassurance. And then they'll need to turn that into you in time um, with enough lead time so that you can actually approve and get it, uh, use it to, to do your payroll calculations. So payroll can be remitted on the right date. So that's one way to do it. It's not the, my recommended way. These days we have time blocks and I wanna tell you about one that I recommend, home base. I recommend home base definitely for small businesses because it's an easy transition. And it's an easy transition because it's free if you have one physical location. So if you have one physical location, Homebase will give you a free employee time clock where your employees can clock in from anywhere. And that will be online, on their phones, it's a downloadable app, and it just makes it easy. They also have GPS enabled um, clock, clock ins. And so you can track where your employees are clocking in. That's if you have employees who work out in the field and they have to be in a specific place when they're trying to clock in. Um, on top of that, it helps you to uh, determine, it helps you, them to, allows them to clock out during breaks and then to clock back in um, throughout the day. And just, it allows them to input notes and things so you know what's happening with their time. And this makes it so much easier. And did I mention it's free for an unlimited number of employees if you have one physical location? So you can always try it out. And then if you don't like it, you can go back to your timesheets. All right. Payroll calculations. This is a big one. Gross pay, taxes and voluntary deductions, and even involuntary deductions and pay time off. You'll need to calculate all these amounts uh, when you're trying to get your payroll, your paychecks together. Gross pay is essentially really just the employee's earnings. So if the employee makes earns ten dollars an hour and they work forty hours in the week and you're paying on a weekly basis, their check is four hundred dollars. Forty times ten. Um, and taxes, you'll need to know their tax rates, which you'll get from the W four form. That'll help you figure out how to calculate that. Voluntary deductions would be like benefits and insurance premiums, retirement contributions, things that they actually decide that they want to sign up for. Now, you can also have involuntary deductions. So like a garnishment, if they have a, a past due debt and, and the court has ordered you to withhold that from their checks and remit it to the debtor, then you'll need to withhold that as well. So these are deductions, money you're deducting from their gross pay. And then pay time off um, is really any holiday or vacation sick time that you are you are paying the employees for, even though they weren't at work. And you'll add that back into the, their gross pay. Um, now you'll need to check your, your state laws. Federal law doesn't really require you to offer vacation um, or sick pay, but in states like California, you are required to offer some sick pay. And so it's important to get a grasp on what you need to do so you, you're not liable in the future. Now let's talk about overtime pay because overtime pay does go into the gross pay amount. Overtime pay is really pay for any work that's over 40 hours in the work week. And it's typically paid at the 1.5 times the regular rate. That's what federal law states. So if the employee earns $10 an hour, but they've worked some overtime, then they're gonna be paid $15 an hour for the overtime hours that they worked. And let's say an employee works 45 hours in a work week. Well, 40 of those hours are regular hours, but the five hours, because it's five, it's over 40, that will be considered overtime hours. And so they would pay, be paid at their overtime rate there. 
Now, one caveat to that, again, is state laws. State laws can be tricky. If you're in California, for instance, you will need to pay overtime for any hours that an employee works over eight in a workday. So regardless, if even if they only work 40 in the week, if they work 10 of those hours on Monday, then two of those 10 hours are considered overtime pay. And you'll need to pay 1.5 times their hourly rate. Now, another kicker for California, I just love that place, um, is that if you work over 12 hours in the day, you get double time pay. So the rate can even change. And so I just wanted to point that out because it's very important to stay abreast of the laws in your state um, because it can really uh, make or break you. If you short pay an employee on their overtime, then you're also short paying taxes because you're not calculating taxes on it. And the IRS can come get you for that. You'll be responsible for back, back taxes, of course, but then penalties and then late fees. And I just it's, it's good to avoid that when you can. Now, payroll taxes and deductions. Um, these are things that you need to calculate as well. So when it comes to Social Security and Medicare, these are also considered FICA taxes. If you hear that, that's what they are. And you'll need to pay those and your employee will need to pay those. Well, that Social Security is 6.2% of their paycheck. Medicare is 1.45%. You'll both pay matching amounts. You will pay 6.2% and the employee will pay 6.2% for Social Security and, and so on. And when it comes to the employee, you'll just need to deduct that from their paychecks. They actually don't have a hand, hand on that hand in that. You'll need to deduct that and remit it when you remit your uh, FICA taxes to the IRS. Unemployment tax and, or insurance is responsible, the employer's responsibility, and it will also need to be remitted. Um, and, but it, there's a cap on it. So there's a max of like $7,000. So you, you, it, doesn't get, it doesn't get too expensive. Now, other deductions that can be made would be income taxes. That's strictly for employees. Now, federal income taxes are common. State income taxes and late local income taxes like from municipalities can vary. Now, it's for instance, if you live in a state like Florida, state income taxes do not apply. So you would not need to make any deductions for that. So let's consider if you have a number of employees that are sparse throughout different states, that makes your job a little bit harder because you'll need to learn the, the taxes for each of those areas. And, and for instance, even New York gets down to having federal taxes, state taxes, and then taxes like for the local areas depending on where they're specifically located in New York. And so you'll need to be careful about um, determining that so that you pay the right amount and, or you withhold the right amounts. Insurance premiums and retirement contributions or voluntary deductions, those are um, typically will be chosen by the employee, um, but you can also contribute as well. And a lot of companies are doing that these days is they may be paying half of the insurance premiums or even a quarter, something to give the the employee incentive to work there. And in that case, you'll need to expense the portion that you want to contribute to. So uh, that will come out of your bank account. But keep in mind that the money that you're pulling from the employee's paycheck or their portion of it is not really an expense to your business. It's just you pulling it and managing the funds for them. Payroll tax reporting is the next thing. So payroll tax reporting is essentially you just reporting how much in taxes that you have um, withheld uh, and that you have, you, you're sending in to the, uh, the, the IRS. For instance, form 941 and 944 will be used to record the federal Social Security and Medicare taxes that you withhold in addition to the income, federal income tax. And so the difference between those would be the, the timing at which you would need to, to, to submit those. So Form 941 is a quarterly form and a lot of businesses uh, are responsible for filing on a quarterly basis. Form 944 is an annual form. And that's really for really some bus businesses that have a really small tax liability and uh, usually under like a thousand dollars. And so um, you have to be approved and to qualify for that. And so I would definitely not file that form unless you've received direct approval from the IRS that you need to file Form 944. Form 943 is for agricultural companies. If you're paying farm workers, then you will use that to report your taxes. And then Form 940 is for unemployment, federal unemployment taxes. You'll need to use that when you're 
when you're reporting that on an annual basis. Now to the fun part, or it's fun for everyone else, right? This is when the cash is leaving your company. So when you're ready to pay your employees and the tax agencies and benefits providers, you need to know how you're gonna pay them. Is it gonna be direct deposit for your employees? Paper check, which is becoming a little more outdated, but it still happens. Even payroll parts, which is kind of new, especially for employees who don't have bank accounts. You'll need to consider how you're gonna do that and how often. And then tax agencies, which tax, agency, tax agencies you need to pay. You need to make sure you have a good handle on that and figure out where they want you to send the money. Some require you to, to actually pay online and they will not accept paper checks. And so you wanna be sure that you, you know exactly where the money needs to go and then the deadlines that they need to be there. When you miss tax deadlines, you incur penalties and late fees, and it can become quite expensive. And then benefits providers, you'll need to decide and figure out how often you need to pay them. From In my experience, typically on a monthly basis, I always recommend pulling the funds out of the employee's paychecks at least twice a month so that when the time comes for you to pay the, the invoice from the benefits providers, you have that money. Um, and it just depends. It really just depends on how you're going to set it up. If you're doing this yourself or if you're working with a, a payroll provider who will be handling the administration for you. Now, when it comes to year end, you'll need to send some forms like the W-2 and 1099s. Then you have specific deadlines, January 31st to get these out. So it's very important that um, you start wrapping things up um, at, at year end. And it reports exactly how much money you paid out to these employees or contractors. 1099s are for contractors. And, and then how many taxes you've withheld. So how many federal taxes and how much did you withhold in, in Social Security and Medicare? You'll have all that labeled on there and you'll, you'll distribute a copy to the worker. And now if you're using a payroll provider, typically they'll make it available online. But if you're doing it yourself, you'll need to make sure you allot enough time to mail it, um, to prepare it, make sure it's accurate, and then mail it by, by, by the deadline. Otherwise, you can be penalized. So that's very, very important. You'll also need to send copies to the IRS so that the IRS knows what to expect. They know your side of the story, how much you pay to these employees, just in case when they file taxes, they don't send a copy of these forms with them and they, they make it seem like they have not been paid the amount that you actually paid them. And so it just keeps confusion down. Last but not least, you'll need to store your employee records. Now, storing your employee records is important because Typically, you need to, to store them for at least three years to be uh, aligned with the law. Um, and then payroll tax records, like unemployment taxes and whatnot, need to be kept for four years. So that's very important. Now, if you're using paper documents, uh, obviously having a, a, a filing system with labels and is very important. But as your business grows, that can become really cumbersome. So having an electronic filing system is very, very helpful. You will collect a lot of payroll documents over the years. And so trying to keep track of all this, this paperwork for three to four years can be really challenging. So signing up for a payroll service or HR, HR provider might be very, very helpful because a lot of them these days actually um, handle all paperwork, including onboarding and any tax forms completely online. And so it makes it much easier for you to retrieve and to store. Last but not least, I want to talk about how you would do payroll. So we do know that you could do payroll using an accountant, a bookkeeper. Sometimes they offer those services. But a full service payroll solution is also a good option. And I, I want to recommend Gusto, especially for small businesses. A lot of them use it. Um, you can actually get started today for $19 monthly. Um, plus $6 for employee. That's typically for businesses with one or two employees though. Um, and even after that, it's only $39 monthly plus $6 per employee per month. And so it's still pretty affordable and it comes with a free trial. So if you just want to try it out um, before you actually commit to anything. But what's great about it is that it calculates the paycheck amounts and taxes for you. You don't have to worry about when you need to deduct certain amounts and which taxes you're responsible for because the system already has payroll tax tables um, mapped. And so when you enter your employee's state and your state, it knows exactly what rates to use. It'll also withhold the taxes and remit them to the tax agencies for you. So that means 
you won't need to, to mail in any chat paper checks. You won't need to check with the tax agencies to see exactly how you can get your payments in. Gusto will handle that for you. And you'll also, it'll also file your tax form. So if you're needing to file on a quarterly basis, Gusto will do that for you. And distribute your year-end tax forms to employees. So you do have to get those out by a certain deadline and Gusto will do that for you. And typically we'll make it available for your employees online so they can print it themselves. And one thing that a lot of, a lot of Gusto users really love is the tax penalty free guarantee. Gusto will not make any mistakes on filing your taxes. And if it does, you and, and you incur a penalty, Gusto will cover that for you. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, and it just makes it much more error proof for you. Okay, I want to thank you guys for chiming in today. And I want to also remind you to take a look at the bottom of this video for a list of resources and articles that we've created to help small businesses with payroll. And just visit us on our site at fitsmallbusiness.com if you have other small business needs. Thank you.